There are many excuses like artists like you and I often use to not create art for some reason. It's very easy for us to come up with these excuses. Um, and one that I want to talk about today is the excuse of I don't know enough. I can sympathize a lot with this excuse because in most fields of study, there is an objective way to do something and an objective wrong way to do something. For example, if you're a surgeon, you have to know how to be a surgeon in the most objective way. Otherwise, you're not gonna be a good surgeon. And usually, rightfully so, this idea is like pervasive in academia. Um, yeah, and it makes sense. It's like, for most things, there is an objective way to do something. And if you want to go into that thing as a profession or even as a hobby, you need to know the correct way of doing it. Otherwise you are going to fail. The problem is that you and I have been taught this idea by society at large, and we also apply it to whatever we're doing in the arts, right? So there's schools for learning how to paint, learning how to do filmmaking, uh, schools for music, and uh, not that they're not beneficial, but it's sort of a contradictory thing going on there. Like you see all these videos online, it's like, is film school worth it? And like most of them say, no, it's not. I mean, usually people are glad that they did it, but it's not worth the thousands of dollars of debt that they find themselves in. Because art, unlike something like surgery, is not at all objective. In fact, it swings to the polar opposite of the pendulum where it's almost entirely intuition based. And this is a very, very hard concept for most artists to grasp because again, we want to figure out the way to objectively do our craft correctly. But it also gets sticky in art because there are like crafts like cinematography and music and like, uh, painting to a degree where it's like there is some objectiveness but also not like if you want to write music it's usually helpful to know music theory which is very mathematical very organized and very objective but like you sometimes make better music if you don't so you can end up thinking yourself in circles with this one and that's not entirely helpful so to solve this, my strategy at least, is to do it. Just go for it. I started writing a musical two years ago with absolutely zero knowledge of music theory, of composition, of like rhythm, like anything involving music at all. And I just dove into it. It was like, well, I'll learn by doing. I'll learn kinesthetically. And I did. I, I'm no Stephen Sondheim, but I, I personally think the musical isn't terrible. I've done that with also with like producing uh, music and uh, writing and almost everything else that I've tried my hand at. One interesting thing that I wanted to mention is that I have been a writer of stories like screenplays and scripts and whatnot for most of my life. Like that was my first um, venture into craft, into artistic craft that I can remember. And when I was first starting out, I watched hundreds of YouTube videos. I read all these screenwriting books like Save the Cat and like, you know, this and that. And um, I was working on a, my big senior project script. It was called Galactic Experiment. It was a going to be a 40 minute Lego movie um, because I used to make Lego videos. And um, it was really interesting because I tried to follow the structure, specifically Save the Cat. That was my main reference point. Um, I've tried to follow the structure to a T, so I would create the objective, like, best story possible. And I did that. I spent hours and hours on it, and then, you know, submitting it to people for feedback, there's like, this feels stale, this feels uninspired, and it really messed with me, because it's like, I did everything right. I did everything I was supposed to, so why isn't this story, you know, at, up there with the most impactful stories that there can be. And I think the answer is because it wasn't me. I was following a formula and I wasn't creating intuitively. I wasn't creating from that internal force of creativity. And after that script, I was like, okay, I still really want to do writing and storytelling, but 
I don't want to do it like I did with this script. Uh, I want to go back to that time when I was just a little kid and had all my Legos and was creating stories in my mind just for me um, by myself in my basement. That's how I want to write from now on. And my writing improved dramatically. And I think like from my personal perspective and the perspective of other people who have critiqued and reviewed my writing, it's exponentially better than um, when I was writing Galactic Experiment. It was that whole approach in creativity like I'm a kid. Um, when you're a kid, you don't have the voices, the outside voices telling you how you should behave, how your creativity should work, what kind of art you should make. You just create stuff because you enjoy it. And I think that's what we should all be striving towards, is towards that like just pure creative intuition, um, insane creativity. Um, so that's what I would encourage you to do. Um, you might be like watching this video for artistic advice and you, you know, looking to like have that aha moment of this is what I need to do or to like build your repertoire of like this curriculum of like how to make stuff. And I would just encourage you to just do it. Um, just block out a little bit of time every day and work on your project and it might be bad. Yes, it's true, um, but it might be good. Someday it will be good. I promise you if you keep working at it, someday it will be good. There's no way it won't be, um, but make sure it's you and make sure that you are approaching it like you want to create it, not that you want to, not like you want to like structure it so it's an objectively good thing um, because that doesn't exist in art. Uh, what is the end? Not a lot of people succeed, but not a lot of people try. See you next week.